Hello everybody and welcome to the vloggy thing. Woo! Today I'm going to be talking about something that's actually kind of interesting that's happening to me uh, and kind of relevant to the channel in general. Um, see that computer behind me over there? You know, that one right there that my cats are exploring? <laughs> that is my file server. That is my big bad file server. That's the, the server I'm always talking about. Um, it runs uh, all my pre-recorded video. It's my backup server for my uh, YouTube videos. Um, it holds the Minecraft server Quest for Creative and all the backups for that. Um, it's not working. There's a reason it's sitting on the table over there instead of in its normal position in my living room underneath my big screen TV out in the living room being my 24-7 server. Uh, and that's because yesterday morning... When I woke up, it didn't. It refuses to boot completely nothing. Um, so, uh, well, let's start at the beginning. I woke up in the morning, and the first thing I do after I go to the bathroom, obviously, is I come into here, sit down in front of my computer, and turn it on to wake up, because I am not a morning person. I do not wake up very well. It usually takes me about an hour to wake up. Uh, I'll get up, and then I'll wake up. And it usually involves copious amounts of caffeine, which I'm trying to cut back on because caffeine addiction is a bitch. I'm sure not as bad as some addictions out there like, you know, tobacco or alcohol or any of the other more controlled substances. But it's still a pain in the ass. And I'm not one for drugs in general, so I'm trying to cut back. Um, but that's how I wake up in the morning. So uh, the first thing I do is I sit down here. I fire up my gaming rig this guy here, the big honking guy right here, and I watch YouTube videos when I wake up. Uh, usually there aren't that many on there, but every now and then we'll get a good number file. Uh, sometimes I get Vsauce. Uh, every now and then I'll have videos left over from the day before that I hadn't watched. Um, yeah, typing on the computer all day for my job uh, makes it really easy to watch YouTube videos all day too because then I could actually work and watch videos at the same time. Uh, that's actually why I have two separate monitors for that exact reason. Um, I also have, I had a third monitor before that uh, I took down because it was just taking up too much space, but I used the primary monitor to work, the secondary monitor to look things up, and the trinary monitor for video. Uh, now I just split it between my big giant ass 42 inch monitor here. But anyways, uh, so I fire up my computer, and all of my computers are interconnected. I have a—I actually have a domain. Yes, I'm the only person in this house, but I have a domain because all of my computers talk to each other. I, like I said, that's, that's my file server. Uh, that's where I store all my files, all my important documents, all of my stuff, all my important stuff. Uh, conveniently, they're all stored on external hard drives, so I haven't lost anything, at least there. Um However, Quest for Creative, I'm kind of in trouble with, but I'll get to that in a moment. Um, but uh, yeah, so all my computers are interconnected so they can share files without a problem. Cat's being cute. And uh, so I have a domain to share authentication and for security and all that fun crap. Um, and I also have mapped network drives. And the mapped network drives reconnect themselves every time I log into Windows. Uh, but yesterday morning it popped up and said could not connect reconnect to network drive and i'm like i haven't seen that error in a long time it's been months since i saw that error ever since i reloaded my server and my gaming rig all in like the span of two days i reloaded everything and uh ever since then my authentication has been like spot on it's been perfect i've never had a problem with it uh the advantages of running a domain shared authentication and it's really nice but uh so I'm like, oh, that's weird. So I fire up remote desktop. I try to connect into my server to see what's going on, and the server doesn't respond. I'm like, ah, crap. So I wander off out into the living room to check on my server, and it's not on. I'm like, huh, did I have a power failure? And if I had a power failure, that had to have been a long power failure because I have a UPS on that thing. And it runs, I mean, last I tested it, it ran for half an hour. Even though it says that the battery's dead and it needs to be replaced, um, it still runs for about a half an hour. Uh, since I'm only running one server on it and I'm not running anything else on it, it runs for a fairly long time. 
Um, so if I lose power, it will have to be the power will have to be lost for a very long time for the server to shut shut off because it lost power. And I do not have it set to start back up after the power comes back because that could actually cause problems. And since this is my home server, I'm not actually relying on up times. I don't have to worry about it being on as often as possible. And if I was, I'd have a generator and all that fun crap. And But I'm not worried. I'm not that, that major worried about it. I have weird shadows. Or is that a mark on my forehead? I don't... I think it's just a weird shadow. Hmm. That's what happens when I'm looking at the camera, but I can see me behind the camera. <laughs> uh, I'm looking at myself. Because looking at the camera is a little bit weird. Because it's like looking at a cyclops. It's just not something I'm used to looking at. But looking at me, I can look at me, but I'm still kind of looking at the camera because me is behind the camera. I, I don't know. Anyways, anyways, anyways. Um, so I, I, so I pushed the power button on the server to fire it back up, figuring out I had a power failure, and I have nothing else in the house that will indicate that there was a power failure. All of my clocks are either backup batteried or they're actually synced with uh, some kind of server out in the cloud somewhere. Uh, even my wall clock connects to that, uh, that uh, analog signal, whatever it is from Utah, that... Uh, has the atomic clock, the super accurate atomic clock. So even that one, if it lost power, it, the second it got power back, it would resync and reset up its time. So I have absolutely nothing to indicate if I lost power. Uh, so anyways, I pushed the power button, nothing happened. I'm like, well, that sucks. Uh, push the power button again, nothing happened. Uh, I'm like, uh, this is five minutes after I woke up, and I just explained to you guys that it takes me an hour to wake up. So this is five minutes after I got out of bed. And I, I'm i not thinking straight at all. Um, so I'm like, I really don't want to spend the next hour because I give myself an hour to wake up and then I give myself another hour to get ready and then get to where I need to be. So I'm like, I don't want to spend the next hour fiddling with this thing. So I'm like, screw it. You know, I'm not dealing with it right now. I will just deal with my computer uh, because yes, my network's on a domain, but I understand that domains can go down. So I have backup settings on this computer on my gaming rig so that it can still access the internet and I can still do my stuff even if the domain controller's down. Though I do lose track uh, lose access to like 90% of my files if my domain controller's down. But uh, you know, it's a home network. I'm not really terribly worried about it. Um so I go home, I go off to work. I actually turn off the power supply on the back of the server and then go off and do my thing at work. Then I come back, and I start fiddling with it a little bit. Unplug the power. All the lights turn off on the server. The hard drives on that I have, the external hard drives, they're off, and everything's like off. And I'm like, okay, okay, this is good, this is good. Plug the power supply back in, and uh, the lights come back on on the motherboard, uh, indicating that it has power. The external hard drives spin up, which strikes me as a little odd. Uh, they really shouldn't. They, they shouldn't. Uh, if they don't have access to a data connection, they should stay off. Even though they have their own external power supply, if they're not connected to a computer, they shouldn't spin up. They shouldn't turn on. But they do. Uh, so that's a little strange for me, which kind of points into the direction of the problem, and I don't like the possibilities. Um, but no matter what I tried, I cannot get this thing to turn on. I tried hard jumping the jumpers on the motherboard to turn it on in case it was the power button itself broke for some reason. That's not it. Um, you know, I, I fiddled with connections. I pulled things out. I plugged things back in. I did all of the standard tests and stuff, and I got nothing. Uh, the fans aren't spinning up. I'm obviously not getting post beeps. Nothing's happening. It's like, I, it's like I'm not pushing the button when I try to turn it on. Uh, so that narrows it down to two possibilities. One is the power supply. And it, it's not that the power supply is not providing power. It's not providing enough power. And it's possible. It's happened before. Uh, but if it's a power supply, that's not a terrible problem. That's not a really big thing. Because even really, really expensive power supplies are like 160 to $200. And I could probably get a really decent power supply for somewhere around 80 to 120. Uh, and I would want a decent power supply because it's my server. 
and I try to take care of it. So if it's the power supply, that's not really a big problem for me. I mean, yes, it's more money than I really wanted to spend right now because I have to take all my spare money and spend it on my car because I need new tires badly, and I drive a Jeep Liberty, and my tires are get expensive. We're talking like 80 to $100 per tire. So I'm probably talking about $400 to get my tires replaced because I have to get somebody else to do it for me because one, I don't have the tools and two, I don't have the know-how. So I got to get somebody else to do it for me. Um, so I, I, I don't want to spend money right now, uh, but I can survive. I can do it. If it's the power supply, I can do it. If it's the motherboard, that's option number two, that's possibility number two is that the motherboard itself is bad. If the motherboard is bad, and it's not turning on because it's not actually, you know, the pushing the button is not access activating the p motherboard. Um, I'm kind of screwed because my motherboard is insanely expensive and my focus is off. I noticed this. The, my, my camera does this a lot. It doesn't like focusing. Let's, let's just manually focus this guy. Let's see, you focus at 20. Yeah, that's much better. I'm just going to leave that as a manual focus for right now. We'll, we'll take, we'll, we won't worry about autofocus. Uh, but uh, yeah, so uh, if my motherboard fried, I'm screwed on a few different levels. One, the processor that's in that server is antiquated. Uh, it's probably about five, six, maybe even seven years old, possibly. I'm not 100% sure how old that motherboard is. But the processor in it, even though it's a Core i7, it's Gen 1 Core i7. I think they're on like Gen 5 Core i7s now. But it's basically ancient. And finding a motherboard that supports that socket is almost impossible. It took me two weeks to find a replacement motherboard the last time it died. And that was near the end of last year. Um, we were having a problem. Uh, that server is actually the predecessor to two servers that I run at my office. Uh, we call them Yin and Yang, and that's, well, that's Death Star, but it's the, yeah, it's the bigger brother to Yin and Yang. Uh, they're all duplicates. Uh, all three of them were built exactly the same when we first got them. That's been upgraded since. But uh, what we were trying to do, we were trying to attach a three terabyte hard drive to it. So I tried to put in like in, an internal three terabyte hard drive. Now, if you've dealt with computers, you know that three terabyte hard drives have a small problem that if your motherboard isn't specifically designed to support those giant hard drives, it will only show about 750 gig out of that three terabytes. And the problem with, and the reason it does that is because hardware manufacturer, hard drive manufacturers, uh, try to screw you out of storage. Um, they, the, when they say a four terabyte, what they're actually talking about is if you counted bytes and kilobytes, like if you counted a kilobyte as 1000 bytes, that's not how, that's not kilobytes in computer terms. That is, that is not a kilobyte. A kilobyte in computer terms is 1024. Now that's not a big difference. 24 bytes compared to a thousand that's not a big difference, but combine that over a course of, you know, millions, basically. Uh, a megabyte is 1024 kilobytes. A gigabyte is 1024 megabytes. A terabyte is 1024 gigabytes. Add that all up. Do all that math, and you're off by quite a few gig. Like, if you get a one terabyte drive, you're getting 920 gig. So you're losing out on 80 gig of storage. Now, they, they get away with this because they use the traditional uh, method of measurement, mega, meaning 1,000 instead of 1024. Uh, but, of course, we're in computer terms, so I do qualify it as a ripoff, kind of, because it's computer terms. And in computer terms, everything is in powers of 2, not of 10. Uh, ten 2 to the power of 10 is 1024. Right, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1024. Yes, 10, 20, two, times the, 2 to the power of 10 is 1024, not 10 to the power of 3. Yeah, 10 to the power of 3 is 1,000. 2 to the power of 10 is 1024. Uh, math, ain't it fun? 
And yes, I do have the powers of two memorized the entire way up to 4096, but uh, <laughs> I've been working with computers that long that I just have this stuff memorized. But uh, so uh, uh, when you get a three terabyte hard drive, you're actually getting about two terabytes plus somewhere around 750 gig. So that's why if you plug in a three terabyte hard drive into a computer that doesn't support it, you get 350 gig. Because it, I actually don't know exactly why. I know it's a hardware problem, but it's not recognizing the extra two terabyte. Same exact problem if you have a four terabyte hard drive, uh, but I don't, I haven't dealt with an internal four terabyte hard drive, so I don't know exactly how many terabytes it shows up as. It might show up as, you know, uh, two terabytes and the other two are inaccessible. I, I actually don't know. Um, so what I tried to do, I tried to upgrade the ROM. I tried to flash the ROM in my old motherboard and toasted the motherboard. It completely trashed the motherboard, would not boot, would not even let me into system settings, could not reset it, could not do anything, trash the motherboard. That's why I tend not to flash firmware. I come from an older school where flashing firmware is actually a huge risk um, and why they don't they didn't want you to do it at the time. Uh, nowadays it's a lot less risky, but uh, yeah, I come from old school. Anyway, so uh, I flashed the BIOS, toasted that motherboard, and I tr tried to replace it. Um, we did it on my server because my server was less important than Yin and Yang. Uh, Yin and Yang didn't get touched because if they died, we would lose countless amounts of man hours and countless amounts of money, and we didn't want to. We didn't run. We didn't want to risk that, so we did it on my server because pff, I I lose a little quality time with my files, and I lose uh, you know a couple hundred bucks to replace the motherboard. That's that's nothing major. Uh, but it took me two weeks, two weeks to find a replacement motherboard for that processor because I have, you, when you're buying computer parts, it's not as simple as plug and play. It, it's not. Um, you have to worry about the correct motherboard. You have to worry about the correct processor for the socket that's on the motherboard. You have to worry about the correct RAM and the RAM timing. Uh, then you have to worry about video cards and the connectivity of the hard drives and optical drives and, you know, what you want externally. And there's a lot to think about. So that's why you always start with a motherboard and work your way out. You buy the processor that fits into the motherboard that you want. You buy the RAM that fits into the motherboard. You buy the video cards that fit into the motherboard. You always start with the motherboard. But if you have all of those things already and you just need to replace the motherboard, that means that you have to shop around to match a piece to the center of your puzzle instead of building the puzzle around the center piece. And it is a giant, giant pain in the ass. And I'm not kidding. It is a pain in the ass. Uh, and it turns out that the socket that's used for my motherboard is apparently like totally outdated they're trying to wipe it from the internet or something i found three motherboards total that would fit that socket two of them were server class motherboards which basically points to the reason why i have such a pain in the butt time replacing that motherboard that motherboard was a workstation class motherboard that socket apparently was server class and now, you might not know the difference, but basically there's error correction control that's built into server class motherboards that are not built into uh, workstation motherboards. Uh, it's, well, about error correction control. Uh, it's about redundancy. And my RAM does not support ECC. Server motherboards do. So if I wanted to buy one of those motherboards, I would have to buy all new RAM. But those are the only motherboards that the processor fits in. The third one that I found was workstation class. Um, but I, did, I didn't want to buy it, but I had no other choice. It was a used motherboard, which kind of points more towards the motherboard being the problem than anything else. Um, so, But if the motherboard fried on that thing, I can't replace it anymore. I can't. Uh, I found I got lucky and found a used motherboard before. The odds of me finding one again are slim to none, uh, and I can't use any of the server class motherboards. So I'd have to replace the entire motherboard and get a new architecture, which means I would have to get new processor 
and more than likely new RAM. And that is expensive. We're talking like $400, $500 just to get something that's comparable with that guy. And that guy's seven years old. Uh, so, I mean, we're talking a Core i7 processor that's kind of... that. Those in general are just expensive. Uh, I had 24 gig of RAM in that thing because I ran a whole bunch of VMware slices. Uh, our company runs off of VMware, basically. We have... Uh, the reason we have yin and yang, the two identical servers, is so that if one fails, the other one picks up in its place. So we have duplicates of our VMware slices on each server. Half of them run on this server, half of them run on this server, but we have it set up so that if one server fails, the other one can pick up the VMware slices that are, were on the now dead server. And we've had to use that before. I've had hard drives fail in these uh, the servers. So we've had to do that and it worked and it's pretty awesome actually. But, uh, it also kind of sucks because that means yin and yang, if they die, they're gone. Oh, uh, that's something, uh, that's something I need to bring up with my boss. That's, that's a big problem. But anyway, so I had 24 gig of RAM because I ran backups of those VMware slices here. Uh, for testing purposes and for upgrading, well, upgrade testing purposes, basically what we would do, we would copy those servers onto my server and then upgrade them here and see if it destroyed something. Because if it destroyed something, we wouldn't apply it to the live servers. Uh, it's, I believe it's just testing upgrades. I would say it's a rolling upgrade, but it's not a rolling upgrade. I forget what it's technically called. Um, it's been a long time since I was in college. Uh <laughs> But uh, so anyways, uh, let's 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 get back to the point. I'm rambling. I like rambling. It's uh, it's a hobby of mine. But so the second problem that comes with having to replace that motherboard is I have two hard drives in there. And when I set it up, I could have sworn I set them up as RAID 1. Now, if you don't know what a RAID is, a RAID is I forget what the acronym stands for. RAID R A I D redundant array of inexpensive disks. That's what it is. Redundant array of inexpensive disks. I remembered that. Awesome. Uh, but what it is, is you have two or more hard drives acting as one virtual hard drive. And the class of RAID determines how it does that. A RAID 0 is what's called a stripe. Basically, it takes a file and it splits that file across two, two or more hard drives. I'm just going to go with two here because it's easy to explain. So half of it is on this hard drive and half of it's on this hard drive. So the idea is that the, uh, you're sharing the storage space. So if you have two 500 gig hard drives, you have a terabyte of storage. And both hard drives can access their halves of the file simultaneously, theoretically doubling your access speeds, both read and write speeds. Uh, in practicality, you're getting about 150% increase instead of a 200% increase. Now, that's, a, that's useful. That's incredibly useful. Uh, a lot of people do it if they're running Minecraft servers because there is a lot of read and writes when it comes to a Minecraft server. Um, but that's a RAID 0. RAID 1 is redundancy. Basically, it has two hard drives, and one is written to, and the other one is duplicated. So you have a primary hard drive, and you have a mirror hard drive. So if one hard drive fails, the other picks up in its place, and you don't lose any data. Whereas a RAID 0, if one hard drive fails, you lose half your data, and you can't access the other half. Um, so it, it, you lose all your data. Whereas a mirror, you have the redundancy. If you lose one hard drive, you have the other one to pick it up. Uh, RAID 2, 3, and 4 are archaic, and they're not used anymore. Uh, but they're all predecessors to RAID 5. I said two, three, and four. I'm counting on my hands like that. Uh, yeah, two, three, and four are predecessors to RAID 5. RAID 5 is a really interesting thing. You need at least three hard drives. And if I remember correctly, it has to be odd numbers. So you can't have four hard drives in RAID 5. You have to have five. You can have three, five, seven, and so on. Uh, but what it is is you have two drives that are uh, striped and a parity drive is what it's called. Now, I thought about that for a little while. Uh, how do you do that? You have three 500 gig hard drives. Total storage is a terabyte and a half, but if you, 
use it in a RAID 5, you get one terabyte of storage. So you have two in a Stripe and a parity drive. So I was always trying to figure out how that works. And then I figured out how it works. It's a third, a third, a third, and a third. So what happens is it splits up your data into three parts. A third of it goes on disk, a third? A third, a third, a third, a third. Yeah, a third of it goes on disk one and disk two. The second third goes on disk one and disk three, and the third third goes on disk two and disk three. That way, if any one drive fails, you still have the redundancy, but you also have the port performance increase of a RAID zero. Um, however, the problem with that is if you lose the array, if the array is broken, you lose everything. Array, a RAID one, if you break the array, you should still be able to grab the stuff off of the hard drive. RAID 0, you break the array, gone completely. RAID 5, same thing. RAID 6, same thing. Uh, RAID 6 is like an enhanced version of RAID 5. The only time I've ever seen it implemented is actually in a proprietary system by HP. They called it something else. I forget what it called it, but it was basically RAID 6, uh, an enhanced version of RAID 5. Um, now, you might see what's called a RAID 10, even though it's not technically RAID 10, it's RAID 1, 0, or inversely, it's RAID 0, 1. It's actually a combination of RAID 0 and RAID 1, and depending on what order the numbers are in is how it's done. It's either a stripe mirror or a mirrored stripe. Uh, so basically, if it's a mirrored stripe, yeah, if it's a mirrored stripe, then you stripe across two hard drives and then duplicate that on two other hard drives. If it's a mirrored or a striped mirror, it's a hell of a lot more complicated and I can't picture it in my head. <laughs> but it's two different ways of doing the same thing. And I don't think there's any in performance increase, so you'll only really ever see RAID 1 0, which is probably the easiest way to do it. Uh, mirrored stripe. It's probably the easiest way to do it, so that's probably why you'll only ever see it. You probably won't ever see a RAID 0 1. Uh, but it is a thing. It is. It does exist. Um, but anyways, my server, well, I could have sworn I set it up as a RAID 1. Uh, so I figured it, if it died yesterday, I'm like, okay, well, then I'll just pull one of the hard drives in, plug it into my little external uh, attachment here. Because I got this thing on my gaming rig where I could just slide a hard drive into a slot on the top and it will access it like it's an external hard drive, which is really awesome. It's really useful for backups and stuff. And that's what I use it for. But I figure, you know, if that hard, if that drive failed, I'll just pop it out, plug it in there, and I have all my data. Well, apparently I screwed up somewhere along the line because I know I had more than 500 gig of storage on that server. And those are two 500 gig drives. Could have sworn I had three drives, but apparently I only had two. And apparently, for some dumbass reason, I set them up as RAID 0. I don't remember doing it, but apparently I did it. And it kind of sucks that I did. And yes, my window's open. So, it, 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 if that motherboard is dead, all my data's lost. The Quest for Creative server, gone. Poof, gone. Uh, I could have sworn I set it up on Mirrored, though. I'm, I'm really disappointed in myself that I didn't. I don't know what the hell I was thinking. It must have been, like... I. I don't know, stupid at the time? I would say hi, but even hi, I wouldn't have done that. I must have just had a really stupid moment. I don't know. But uh, yeah, so I wanted to throw that out there. Uh, my server's dead. Um, and I do have two possibilities. I could replace the power supply or I could replace the motherboard. Now what I can do, and I haven't done yet because I wanted to make this video, is I could replace the power supply with the one in my gaming rig. They're both ATX power supplies. And they're both designed for the higher-end processors. Uh, I think, I, I hope. Um, if I remember correctly, that processor requires a six-prong power connector, whereas that power, the processor required a four-prong power connector. But I'm fairly sure that, uh, that power supply supports the four-prong as well. So I'm fairly sure this will work as a test. Um, but I'm going to have to tear apart my gaming rig, tear apart my server, and do a power, power supply transplant just to see if it'll work. 
Uh, and if it does work, then I have all my stuff. I haven't lost anything and I can just order another power supply and it can be here and however fast I can get the shipping, uh, possibly a week and I won't have a problem with that. But if it is the motherboard, well, I'm screwed. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing I can do. The server is gone. Uh, I lost all that data. Uh, I do have backups of Quest for Creative World, but they're old backups. Um, I don't back up regularly. The backup solution that I had wasn't that good. Uh, MC My Admin doesn't seem to work very well with its backups and uh, Attack of the B Team server, or it was possibly just my server. I don't know. Uh, it just didn't work for me. Uh, so I was doing the backups manually, and but I wasn't doing them all the time. <sighs> So let this be a lesson to all of you out there. Back up your data regularly and often and always have multiple backups because you never know when you're going to need it. You never know when everything's going to fail miserably and just die horribly. Even with even with the redundancy that we have even on our phones, you can easily just lose all your data. You never know when you're going to lose your data. Um you know, Dropbox should be good. Something like Dropbox, uh, Dropbox, Google Drive, uh, all those other ones out there that I can't remember of. They were like enterprise class there. They are bunker class storage. Basically, their servers, well, they have servers spread across the, the world. So you have good access time. But their backups are in like nuclear bunkers, old disused nuclear bunkers. Uh, that, so that's why they're called bunker class backups. Uh, the general idea is that pretty much no matter what, your data is going to be safe. However, that it is only as safe as Dropbox. Now, I'm not saying that they have any nefarious methods or any kind of thing like that. But what I am saying is be careful with who you trust with your data because they could be compromised at some point. Like uh, all, all this crap with the U.S. government that's going on with the NSA monitoring everything that everybody does, I don't trust any form of online backup unless I encrypt the, the data locally and then upload it. And even then, it's not really trustworthy. Um, like there was this whole thing with TrueCrypt recently. Um, and I don't, know, I don't know what happened with that. I don't know what's going on with that right now. I... Uh, and it scares the hell out of me because all of my important stuff is encrypted with TrueCrypt because it was solid, open source encryption software that people actually looked at the code and found it relatively safe. I mean, there are problems with it, but they haven't found any kind of major huge loopholes with it. Um, but recently, like a couple weeks ago, all of a sudden they're uh, SourceForge page pops up and says, TrueCrypt is unsecure. Please download the latest version to de-encrypt your stuff and then switch over to BitLocker. Now, if you don't know what BitLocker is, BitLocker is an encryption tool provided by Microsoft. It is closed source and it's Microsoft. Um, so there's a lot of conspiracy theories going on with that. There's a lot of debate uh, they think that the, the running conspiracy theory is that TrueCrypt had been compromised, uh, that uh, like the NSA got to them, and their choices were basically include a loophole that would allow the NSA to decrypt TrueCrypt files or basically go away, uh, and they chose the latter. They chose to go away. Um, so, yeah, it... TrueCrypt had a lot of questions to begin with. Nobody really know, knew who made TrueCrypt. They never really figured... It was kind of an anonymous kind of thing. And I like the idea, and I like the fact that it was open source, and that people people are still looking over the, the code, the old code, not the new code. Um, they're looking over the old code, just doing a security audit and all that fun stuff, and they have found problems with it. Now, what they're going to do is that they're going to find the or they're going to take the minor problems that they found with it. They're going to fix them and fork TrueCrypt. So basically, you're going to have it's somebody else has picked up TrueCrypt. So the, the original person that made TrueCrypt isn't doing it anymore. Might have been compromised, might be problems, but somebody else is going to pick up in its place, and that is the awesome, 
awesome thing about open source software is that if the original programmer can't do it anymore for one reason or the other, uh, somebody else can pick up in their place. Um, and then it can also be checked by a, a many, many, many people, uh, way more people than check, than check Microsoft software. Uh, because Microsoft's software is closed source, so it's not open to the public to review. So we have to trust that they actually looked at it and that they have enough eyes looking at it. But with open source software, thousands upon thousands of people can look at it and they can do it because they want to. They want to do it. They want to help out with this thing. And uh, that is a much better motive than money. Okay, so Microsoft security experts are being paid. Now they may still want to do this. This is not, I'm not saying anything really negative about Microsoft. I'm saying things positive things about TrueCrypt, about open source software in general. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I just realized I'm going off on a tangent here completely. I need to get back on topic and the topic is always back up your stuff. Uh, always have a backup plan, always back up your software to a reasonable extent. Obviously, if you're if it's your school files, uh, external backup will do you fine. Uh, if we're talking about work stuff, you'll want you'll definitely want an off-site backup um, in case you have a flood. And anybody who knows me in personal life will get that joke. Um, well, most anybody. Uh, so, anyways, uh, gonna end it here because that's pretty much all I came here to say is that the server's down. I'm working on it. I just wanted to tell the story uh, before I actually actually did work on the server i don't know what's going to come of it i the story is still being written i'll let you guys know later um and i'm just going to say to you guys as always keep playing the game and have fun and always back up your stuff <laughs>